Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing great. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. The goals are short and sweet. Energy healing for the physical body is what we're exploring today. I wanna to thank you so much. This is to the client. Thank you so much for this opportunity to help you out. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. There's a lot that we're gonna learn from you today and there's a lot that we can receive from this healing together. So I wanna thank you so much for that. I'm gonna relax and get in the zone here and let's see what comes up about your physical body balance. There may be something that echoes through about mental, emotional body. Um, you never know what you're gonna come across, but I'll throw it out there. Maybe there's some past life thing or some alien connection thing, I have no idea. But physical body is connected to everything that's energy in all time and space. And maybe it'll be like super expanded out there or maybe it'll just be physical body healing. <laughs> that makes all the logical sense. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna relax now. <sighs> and get in the zone here. <sighs> okay. So I'm just putting it out to the universe. You're really reaching out for some support here for physical body energy healing. And what can we do to really help you feel physically enriched, physically balanced, physically good in the organs and the muscles and the bones and the skin and the eyes <laughs> and the fingers and toes and the spine, and the blood, like all that you are physically. I welcome the most meaningful support that I can provide today to really help enrich your physical body balance. Well, if the first thing I hear, I hear you are crying and I hear you say, it's something like, I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to feel better. And I see that the space that you're in represents a heart. And the heart is not beating. And you're crying inside of a heart that is not beating. So I'm here with all this uplifting energy and I show you that I'm here in your heart and I touch your hand and something about the taste of lemons and it's not an uncomfortable thing. I'm showing a picture of uh, two young friends and they're, they're girls and they're, they've got all these weird chapsticks with different flavors and one of them is like sour lemon. <laughs> and I see they both have sou sour lemon <laughs> chapstick and they're giggling about it and licking their lips. And when I, I tell you that I'm here and I touch your hand, that image comes up and I share the image of, I guess, sour lemon chapstick <laughs> with you. And my guides tell me that um, they, I hear the words pucker up, but it's also about how lemon can really be a bit startling. And it's uh, almost too flavorable to tolerate the flavor. The flavor is overwhelming. And there's something about childlike joy in the sour lemon warhead challenge. <laughs> I know about these things from my youth, but all this is echoing about youthfulness and playfulness and the power of lemon and lemon wakes you up and lemon makes you giggle and random lemon flavor. And uh, so that's really coming here and it's to bring you to life, okay? It's to energize or activate your body in a lemony kind of way. <laughs> They also show me someone who's passed out and then you see in movies, I don't know what this stuff is, but I see it in movies where they like break something under their nose that smells terrible and then they wake up. But there's something about lemon. <laughs> Someone's passed out and they're given lemon and they're just like, 
like they instantly come out of their coma. So this is like really revitalizing, regenerating, like bam, lemon power, okay? So, and who knows, maybe there's some vitamin C in there. I'm not sure, maybe you need some vitamin C, but the, the lemon power, and then I'm thinking about lemon as an actual useful substance to eat. And then I think about vitamin C. Okay, this is the next thing that I'm shown. You aren't crying, but you're not exactly paralleling the lemon joy <laughs> of these images. <laughs> you're still here, not uh, clapping or cheering and standing up and doing jumping jacks and who knows what. No, you're just still sitting down, but your eyes are open and you're looking at me and you're not crying. Something about bringing you back to life, bringing you back to life. Almost like when your heart is beating, when you're brought back to life, it is going to juice up everything in your body. And they show me a picture of somebody who is sitting still all the time, day after day after day, suddenly takes up, I don't know, bicycling. And now they're biking 20 miles, five days a week. And so they're adding this ingredient of activity and it's like a washing machine for the body. So the activity actually washes out, out the blood, it washes out the muscles and it washes out the body. It brings in the oxygen that washes out the body. So it's this healthy exercise or healthy activity of biking versus sitting down, let's say maybe being peaceful, but there's, um, it, it's almost like, uh, it's geared toward disconnect from the body instead of action with the body. So this picture comes up. They want me to put you on the bicycle. And they want you to be on a bicycle outside with the fresh air. And they want you to be on a bicycle outside with fresh air having fun. <laughs> and they're bringing you back to life. Then they show me a picture where um, you're on a bicycle and you're not having fun. <laughs> and they're like, the instruction specifically said that you need to also have fun. <laughs> so they put like a big red X on this, like you're like not having fun on the bike versus having fun on the bike gets the thumbs up, okay? <laughs> You're still just, you're not, you're being stubborn. That's, that's what you're being. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm like, dang, high fives your stubbornness. Like, you're just not wanting to give yet. You're, you're still, um, your eyes are open. You're not crying. You are listening and receiving. But you're not shifting gears just yet, Okay. That's perfectly okay. <laughs> We're gonna keep nudging you in the right direction. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I put you on a bike, but this time you better be smiling. <laughs> They're kind of teasing you about this. Then they show me a bunch of kids pin the tail on the donkey, and the tail the tail has a little like pin in it and then this child is trying to figure out where maybe the tail goes on this like picture of a donkey on the wall and then it, it, the kid is now like f targeting you and you're gonna get a little like pin poke in the butt just like a cartoon so you better be smiling when you ride your bike <laughs> so, maybe you need laughter you know maybe that's maybe part of this physical body healing is about laughter, is about activating the heart, um, maybe youthful, childlike, joys, sour warhead challenge or something, um, lemony chapstick with your best bud from early childhood, I don't know, um, riding a bike and smiling and the humor that goes along with not smiling and what we're gonna do to get you, you better be smiling, you know, pin the tail on the donkey. So there's a lot here about um, kind of silliness, teasing, laughter, youthfulness, um, lemony energy, energizing. So bicycling, active versus not active. It's just like um, 
a lot of discussion, but also we're putting these energy images into your aura, okay? We're like absorbing it into the sponge of your physical body it, that exists in all time and space. And so that you can really reap the reward of this experience. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, now there's a male energy that... Uh, Okay, I need to uh, pause for a moment here. I mean, there's a picture to it. Um, everything that we've seen thus far just sort of moves over to the side, and I guess you could just call it a black image. But there's very something very noticeable that it, it's almost just like a, a rounded, like a pole that's rounded at the top, maybe five feet tall, made out of cement perhaps but it's black and it blends in with a black background so you barely notice it. It's very random, okay? And then there's this male energy that stands and his hand is sort of resting upon this uh, black cement pole. <laughs> I mean, what am I supposed to call it? Like, where, maybe you would see one of these in a random old school parking lot as like a blocker so your car doesn't go any further. I mean, it's just a very random thing. But he stands there and his hand is on this, maybe like this, the, there's a child and then his hand is on the child's head. It's just like a rounded, but it's made, it's sturdy, it's solid. He's trying to talk to you. He's trying to get a message through to you. All right, I tell him that I, I it's very hard for me to understand what that message is. So I'm going to have to talk. We're going to, I'm just going to have to talk to you about it. Um, talk to him about it. Just me and him here for a minute. I'm just looking at him. He looks so strange. Um, he has a bone structure on the outside of his body. So it's an exoskeleton and the bones are black. He also has a no noticeable teal colored streaks. Um, within some of the crevices of the black exoskeleton. He is more human looking than insect looking, by the way. He does stand like a man with his bones on the outside. And his face is like a skeletal face. I feel like there's something important about all the black color. I'm talking to him about it. And this, and I, I, it's his words or his language or the way he communicates is like listening to a, a song on mute. I just, I don't know what he's saying. And so I'm going to have to start working on figuring out how to translate him. He smiles and he says, oh, I appreciate your effort, Abby. I appreciate your effort, like A for effort. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> then he instantaneously opens up and where it's like uh, Beauty and the Beast. And uh, it doesn't matter that he's a big, massive animal man. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, Bell sees him for who he is. Um, not the big beast that he is that everybody rejects. Because he was rejecting of everybody. Then stumbled upon the wrong person that he rejected and then he gets to be the reject, you know? So he has this other story, but she doesn't care about his past. She just, she, she's trying to understand her own circumstances. Like this story is very powerful, you know? And I feel whimsical. I feel free. I feel in love. I feel, um, rich even. Like I, I feel the presence of of being like Belle, you know, she loves books and she has this unfathomably amazing library that the beast has in this castle long forgotten, right? And that's like her heaven, you know? And then there's just fancy floors, fancy palace, like this room, like, and just being carried away by music and dancing and just a night. It's very romantic, you know? And um, it's sweeping um, a lady off her feet, sweeping a lady off her feet. Because he takes the role of the beast and then you take the role of the bell. And your eyes don't see the ugliness. Your eyes don't see what others would see. Like 
your heart sees, your heart sees. And when your heart sees, you are free in what your heart sees and you're free to dance. You're free to, to dance and to be in your heaven because he shows me the things that you love to do are your heaven. And you're free to be in your heaven and uh, shows me Bell and the books. And he, he really wants to cater to this specific story for you because Bell's life was complicated. She got taken and brought to this place. It was her father, I believe, that gets taken there and she goes after her father. And he's somehow imprisoned there. This is all from memory. I'm almost certain that's how it goes. Do I remember she wasn't very trusting of the beast because he had anger issues. And she just didn't know what to make of it. And there was so much cruelty. She just wanted to keep her father safe. So she has this complicated story. And then we have Gaston, this like self-absorbed mega man, you know, who everybody, of course, should just love Gaston. Like the men and women alike should love Gaston. He's a freaking God's gift to everybody, you know, that she sees through him. She sees him as gross because he's so self-absorbed. It makes him ugly, right? That she sees the beast as a, a man of a story. A man of, um, of life learning. A man who's not necessarily perfect, but is trying. And uh, she learns this about him. And it's not perfect. But there are moments that are good. And he talks about what it is that you love is your heaven. And let your heaven be with you. And let yourself be with your heaven. And let heaven give you gifts that sweep you off your feet. Because he shows me as well. This is interesting. We would, let's say we're Bell and we see this freaking sweet library and we love reading books. So of course that's like right up our alley. Now imagine what we see as material objects, books, are actually living things. And so the library is a heaven of material wealth, of book wealth, okay? But that's not all that's there. The books are like beings, are like spirits. And these spirits love to be loved too, just like people. And when you are engaged in the books as well, you are loving the books that then feel loved, then express love. And then you're letting the books actually manifest good things in your life the books okay the human be like uh yeah the book is not gonna give me good luck <laughs> but the book is a living energy you can say it's material like gaston who sees things as very bare bones and not magical at all and would scoff at you for even saying such a thing but you would know just as Belle would feel the truth in her heart. So the things that you love in your life love you back and let that love be generous to you. It's like, let yourself be nurtured by that love, by the heaven, okay? By the heaven energies. And as I talk about this, you really are closed off. Like maybe you have an exoskeleton. Maybe that's why he is showing himself as having an exoskeleton because perhaps you have to ha be strong on the outside, tough on the outside, and maybe on the inside you're quite uh, vulnerable. That's why you would have an exoskeleton. But a human who has an exoskeleton as a symbol, symbolism, you know, why, why, would, why would we say that? It tells me you gotta be tough on the outside. And, um, I want to talk to him about what that means. What does he mean by you having, being tough on the outside? He, okay. Energetically, he represents very soulmate energy, dearly, dearly loves and cares about you. Um, he doesn't need anything in return. Um, so, 
if you receive this message and you're curious and you decide you want to communicate um, with a being as I've described that impacts you in this way, his name is basically the way he makes you feel when I talk about him and what he is talking about is a direct link to his energy. If you were to choose to talk to him and forget about him for 10 years and then come back and watch this video, he wouldn't break his heart by any means because he's not um, possessive, he's not manipulative, he's not um, like that. He's uh, balanced with love, okay? He just loves you. He just simply loves and cares about you. He's not doing it for himself. He's doing this for you. And um, that, I feel that makes him sad. To see you with the exoskeleton makes him sad. It would be like Belle wearing a weird, um, a shell, like her wearing like a weird exoskeleton. Literally, he just shows me a cartoon and then he recreates Belle as wearing this weird ma skeletal armor. And what kind of romance would there be? What kind of love would blossom? And then he parallels the beast and his armor is exposing his ugliness, right, on the outside because he has to develop his heart so that he can be the beautiful man he'd always been, right? He has to give in to himself. And so then Belle would have something of herself to work on, right? For her to truly be Belle. And Belle is beautiful, right? Belle means beautiful. So she is Belle and she is beautiful in the story. Now you are Belle. Now, if you had an exoskeleton, you would be no different than the beast. The beast has something to work on and it's exposed in his expression, his physical expression. You would have something to work on, it would be obvious in your physical expression. And then I'm shown again, this is from guides, not this being. Because it's like my guides and your guides like intermixed together <laughs> and like this like giggly swarm or <laughs> something. I don't know. What, um, but they show that like little donkey tails like and then you on the bike, you better be smiling. <laughs> They're doing that again. <laughs> it's like loosen up, just take down your walls, live a little, come to life on the inside of yourself. Um, let your heart beat, let your heart beat. And it feels obviously romantic because we're talking about Beauty and the Beast story, but um, it feels, you know, like physical, it feels like being physically alive. Romance, when it's at its like greatest form, does make you feel physically alive, it makes you want to be alive, you know what I mean? It makes you want to be alive. But when that's missing, or maybe it's it's um, years down the road and it just doesn't feel like the same fire even though the love is still there. It just molds and shapes itself differently, you know? But um, there's something to the life force of what love can give us, you know? What it can feel like and how it can recharge our batteries and all that and more, you know? Yeah, he wants to continue to talk about that exoskeleton. But I ask him also, because I, I don't want to get um, to, I mean, I want to make sure that we are focused on the physical body healing. I know that his presence is extremely important. There's a reason why I'm noticing him and his message is coming through because you need this message. But I want to make sure that uh, I'm staying on task. I mean, I want to make sure this is really uh, acquiring a certain level of um, accomplishment today. Okay, I'm kind of listening to a bunch of different uh, voices right now about that. I see him look different and he does not have an exoskeleton. He's just a man. There's something sad about that, that he's just a man, he's a sad man, and... And when you shed your exoskeleton, you just... It... It, just, it, it reveals um, sadness, it reveals sadness. 
And I say, okay, let's say then, is that why all these jokes and everything is not like you're not changing? Because the lemon stuff is enough that that would crack my like uh, most intensive grimace, you know? Like I am dedicated to being unhappy here somewhere inside myself and you will not take that away from me. Okay, you took it away from me. I love that lemon stuff, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like um, you're pretty like consistent here. <laughs> Man, we gotta nudge you out of that. It's because there's a, a, it's like, yeah, healing your physical body is a, an emotional healing. It's um, interdimensional healing because we have this nice being here that loves you and you need to hear that. That this being could feel sad for you even. You know, that this being would f have feelings, right? That would be reflective of, of a loving person, you know? <laughs> So I ask him, what would um, you as your happiness, could he show me you as your happiness? And he just takes it back to the dancing on the floor and swept away by this beast and uh, in your heaven. And that's why he keeps talking about it because he wants to guide you into your happiness. It's really important he's always saying your first name specifically like he acknowledges you what oh, okay um there's something else that i'm being shown here it's a, a bit of a shift in another direction because the question is what energies are you letting in because he was having a hard time reaching you and he wanted to tell you this because he wants to help you blossom in your happiness in your heaven okay he wants that for you because he loves you genuinely he doesn't it's okay if you don't choose that for yourself but he cares all right but what i'm witnessing now i don't know little miniature people um uh, they look like uh what what is his name martin the martian um but little like little like two inch miniatures and there's like a million of them like ants swarming all over you in the most gross way and they start at the feet and they work their way up and it's like you're being pulled into this huge swarm and mass of like martin the martian i never like martin the martian all that much I, there's something that really I can't I can't even recall like put my finger on a specific cartoon that I could remember why I didn't like him I want to say that he wasn't bright or something in in a way that irritated me or he was doing things that I just thought were really a waste of his time or something <laughs> I can't quite remember but you're being swarmed by Martin the Martian which I have to I have to translate based upon how the image makes me feel it's not good it's not um it's not my f it's like my least favorite cartoon character swarming you okay <laughs> that guy did not make me laugh that guy like annoyed me i don't even have a decent memory of a, of a cartoon I, I, this is i'm sure there's people that love martin the martian but i just got i got irritated by him <laughs> all right And you're getting lost. You're letting something um, overwhelm you and take you down and then swarm all around you. It's almost drowning in this little annoying people. <laughs> it's they're they're becoming gross like insects um, that are going down your throat even and choking you like um and you almost don't care because you're so tired of fighting, fighting this, fighting back. Hmm. I guess we all are going to have to be sad for a little bit. Because uh, sometimes maybe we need to get at, down to your level. And maybe you'll see us more because we'll be vibrating the same as you. So it'll be obvious to you. 
I'm like dropping my heart into the saddest pits of sadness for you. And I start to become you and I just am so tired and I'm so worn out. I just, just let this annoying cartoon just take over me and turn into nasty bugs that are like crawling in my very mouth. And I, I just, I'm just letting myself succumb to this, this terrible fate, okay? That was like the saddest. And I fall asleep actually, and I'm just a, I'm just bones is all that remains. But I'm bones that remain in a in a dead world. Like there's nothing that grows here. Not even cactuses can grow in this harsh dead environment. It's like no never rains. Like never any nourishment, nurture at all. Zero zilch, nada, nothing. Okay. But because you're bones in a world that is basically the same, you feel like you fit in here. <laughs> you feel like it translates. And in a way, you're given a bit of a blessing because they erase your memory of what it means to have heaven. And they, they make it so silent from your soul that you would never look for anything but what you already have. And therefore, you would find some sense of fulfillment because you wouldn't know otherwise. Not even your soul would give you a hint that something wasn't right. And they show this place elongated in time and you're given it as a gift for a very long time, like 10,000 years to a human. Imagine a human being living 10,000 years. It's hard enough to live 40 years. I mean, it's hard to be human every single year. It's just like, oh my God, I made it through another year. <laughs> I'm still here. And I'm still kicking. <laughs> Gonna ride that bike and smile. <laughs> and here it's like, it's agonizingly long time. But it doesn't feel like agony. Because of the blessing of it. And you actually find peace here. You find peace because you don't have to be anything and you don't have to long for anything. You don't have to feel a sense of lack. You don't need water, sunshine. You don't need any of it. You just have all the all your needs met. To me, I'm looking, I was like, ooh. Definitely not where I'd want to take a vacation, let alone 10,000 years <laughs> lifespan there. But I can feel that it's pleasant because there's nothing for you to balance the scales with in your energy sensation of reality, okay? But what's nice is every thousand years that passes, um, because each thousand years it seems like you gain a, a feeling of love, you gain a feeling of contentment and joy and simplicity of this place and of yourself in this place. That unexpected things start to happen, like... Um, there are days where you, you, you see something that you don't know what it is, but it basically represents the sunshine. You don't really feel it, but you notice something looks different and you feel like the universe gave you some kind of miracle and you couldn't be more grateful for that. So it starts to introduce you to feelings that are um, nurturing, are like... Uh, you know, chicken noodle soup for the soul, <laughs> like that. And I see this man, he is like, the, he is a soulmate who loves you, like dearly, dearly loves you. And sometimes he turns his whole being into stars for you, just for a moment, because he doesn't want you to he only wants to give you a tiny taste of a miracle that you would notice it, but it wouldn't um, distort the slow but sure building of um, you back to your natural balance and health, your energetic health, you know? This is a safe space. It seems so gloomy, but I think it's wonderful here. I've, I'm so, I cry for you because I'm so thankful that this is given to you. 
you don't you aren't a skeleton to yourself and this place isn't lonely because you don't know any different and you don't even understand time like it's ridiculously revitalizing and you feel it in your very bones by the way and maybe this is physical healing for your bone structure as well as your soul nour nourishment for the soul right and the energetic balance and um, divine time for you to recover your sense of self in a way that is, isn't, um, it feels natural, it isn't forced, you know, we're not going to force you to smile, like, well, maybe, you keep showing me that little, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe we will, maybe we'll put the donkey tail on you, <laughs> and there's always this giggle about a donkey tail, I don't know, <laughs> you, need, you need to giggle about donkey tails, okay, so in little kids' birthday parties and memories of the past and being a kid with chapsticks or something. <laughs> Lemon warhead challenge or something. <laughs> you need that. I'm seeing the 10,000 years disappear and you finally are coming back and you're able to smile. And as soon as you smile, instantaneously become a pyramid. And you have four, um, your pyramid with a base of four corners, okay? So a square base. And you're starting to feel like you remember yourself as an ancient sense of self, a wise, balanced foundation, even because this pyramid shows a strong base or a strong foundation, um, but also represents time and ancient time and uh, a strong sense of the base or the balance of yourself as an ancient being. You know, this, it's just a, it's a lot of really positive words. It's really mysterious and interesting language, right? But it, but it's, it, this is the medicine that is rebuilding your heart and soul, your connection with your divine self, you, yourself across time. You know, I find it so interesting when I, introduce a session i feel inspired sometimes to say things and i and it's it's weird that how they they tend to parallel like um i was wondering if there's gonna be some kind of past life even in here but we are seeing like interdimensional conversations and a being that loves you and um it's recovering you yourself not just like the physical self yes but the physical self is being nurtured by an emotion and um a, a interdimensional space and interdimensional communication and and soulmate level like love and balance you know and uh and that's feeding your body feeding your bone structure it's feeding the base and the the groundedness of yourself with yourself with your life <laughs> and cross time and space all that stuff okay seems to me that um I need to, I'm gonna, what is it about this picture? I guess it looks like blood and it looks like, um, I, I see an elephant that's having a hard time lifting its trunk and it just like, it is what it is. <laughs> and I see a kangaroo that just doesn't feel like hopping. Um, I see a bird that's, it's like standing on the ground and it's not using its wings to fly. And I touch this blood and I'm just going to put iron in it. I feel like um, these reflections make me feel worn out, worn thin. Um, so energetically, I can take images that counteract that to manifest that divine truth okay so we just take one blueprint and merge it with this blueprint so we just upgrade it okay oh wow that's really i'm surprised how quickly that's happening it's like i see um pac-man gets the power boost and is eating the strange little ghost things like um uh, but it, it's like you're you see that you're giving a power boost and what was once eating you you are now eating it like i see that sensation and it's supernatural it's not only natural 
and supernatural. It makes you feel supernatural, like super being. <laughs> I'm surprised how quickly that was taking effect. But yeah, it's, it's it's so quick. Like you're so quick taking on this juice, and it's a, in a physical way, okay? Just like rejuicing you, just like power juicing you. <laughs> it's just I'm adding the the right kind of fuel to the car here, like. Uh, and it wasn't really an empty tank. It just wasn't the right mixture of fuel. It just vibrationally, it's just something was lacking there. And now I see pictures of you on a big trampoline and you're not only jumping up and down, but you have re weird confidence and you're doing like crazy, uh, crazy like Olympic level somersaults and all kinds of cool stuff. And you're not falling off. Like you're not screwing up. You're doing it perfectly. And we're you're drawing a crowd and we're all cheering and clapping. And we love you for this. We love you for this. <laughs> Thank you for putting on a show for your neighbors because you're awesome at the trampoline. <laughs> we see this in you and we're clapping and cheering for you. And you just keep going. You're like turning into the Energizer Bunny. Like, my gosh, I think we've done it. I think we've shifted you from the resistance of <laughs> yourself. Like, I will, I can't just adapt to being happy. I want to, can't do it. But now you're getting there. You know what? You're getting there. It's actually cool to see you flip flop like that. Yeah, you're going to be just fine. This has got all the information and the medicine that you need to recover, okay? And to start to feel refreshed with some fresh new air and a rejuvenated sense of self and connection with the interdimensional universe. It's pretty wonderful. All right. Thank you so much for this. Thank you again for sharing. For those watching, if you would like my support, I'd be honored to help you with literally anything. You can ask me anything. Um, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day.